Sean Franklin and Nicole Smith from Blood and Iron Martial Arts. We're here today to talk to you about the difference between tricks and techniques. So what is the difference between a trick and a technique? It can be defined in many ways, but the one that we're going to go with is a technique will give you options where tricks will not. Every good martial arts system, even outside of sword fighting, is designed around the idea that your opponent is not going to let you do what you want. And if you're fighting well, you should have a backup plan if whatever you're doing fails. It stands to reason if my opponent's low, I probably want to attack high. And if I can get even higher, it makes it even more difficult for them to parry. Some people take this to mean that they should jump at their opponent so they can get their attack even higher. Could this hit someone? Well, conceivably, yes, if they have a weak parry and aren't expecting it. The problem arises if they do manage to parry successfully. That isn't to say that going over your opponent's guard doesn't have its place in historical sword fighting. It is a documented technique. The important part is you're in a good place to execute follow-up actions if it doesn't work. Another one is where one fighter throws an attack and the second fighter just tries to dodge out of the way. Athletic fighters can often get away with this against opponents who are slower and who have big tells. But it can also go horribly, horribly wrong with rather obvious results. Being able to perceive your opponent's movement and move around them with a counter is a very good thing if you're capable of it. Just do it safely. Historical masters weren't dummies. They understood that you needed to be able to do this safely and still have the ability to defend yourself if things went sideways. If you're just looking to score a quick touch, flicking the sword forward is one of the fastest ways to do it. However, this will likely leave you skewered on their sword as well. The safer way to do this would be to control their sword before you launch. If you want more information on this, you can see our rapier video. You see this idea over and over again. Take, for example, the Zorkow. The intention is to break through your opponent's strike and hit them in the head. It's fairly easy to turn your sword into it and make it so they cannot hit you in the head. Even though I've thwarted this workout attempt, it's very easy for my opponent to chain into many different combos, still making it an effective opener. So, who's to say? What's a trick? What's part of a more complete fighting system? We've used fairly clear examples in this video, but it's not always that way. The best we can do is study the historical sources and learn from those that actually did fight with real swords. And even that's not perfect. Just because someone 500 years ago wanted to write something down doesn't mean it wasn't a trick shot or that it even worked. <laughs> Takes a lot of research, practice, and beating each other up to get a little bit of clarity. But for now, we hope you've enjoyed learning a little more what sword fighting actually looked like.